now for uh, Neta Levy from Itach Maaki, uh, which will speak about the Israeli side of the resolution 1325. Okay. Thank you very much. Does it work? No? <laughs> okay. Thank you very much for inviting me and for hosting this discussion, which I think that one of the uh, optimistic things that I already uh, that, that already a turn out of this discussion is that it, it shows that it's not only for women, it's not only women's business, and as we see here, many male. Uh, <laughs> so uh, this is a very uh, this is very nice, and it was very interesting to to hear your lecture. A few words about Itach Ma'aki. Itach Ma'aki, Women uh, Lawyers for Social Justice. This is the NGO that I'm working uh, uh, within as a lawyer. Uh, Itach Ma'aki is with you in Hebrew and Arabic. And we are an NGO, an advocacy NGO, working since 2001 to advance the rights of women, uh, especially those from marginalized communities, uh, focusing on rights and voices of women from the social, ethnic, geographic, and economic uh, periphery in uh, Israel, women who are invisible to decision makers in uh, public policy and uh, legal fields, including Arab women, Orthodox women, women living in poverty, low income uh, workers, single mothers, and many others, many other women. Uh, in this capacity, uh, since 2008, Itach Ma'aki has been working uh, to advance the implementation of 1325 UN Security Council Resolution uh, and the agenda of women, peace and security, uh, focusing uh, on, the, on the fact that, uh, that the resolution uh, was um, calling for the representation, the participation of women from different parts of society, from different groups of society, uh, and not only from mainstream and leading uh, groups uh, in uh, uh, decision-making bodies. Uh, I think that uh, Nivin, uh, that Nivin described 1325 very thoroughly, so I will not repeat uh, her, uh, I will not repeat uh, the, the, too much, and I will not get in too much into the resolution, but I will say that the resolution that was passed in the year 2000 by the United uh, Nations Security Council, not a feminist uh, body, was, very, was an historic resolution. Uh, it was historic by calling for a full and equal participation of women in all peace and security initiatives, uh, it was historic because of its holistic uh, uh, approach dealing with representation uh, and the need for representation alongside with the need for protection of, for women from violence and including the mainstreaming of gender perspectives in the fields of peace and security. Um, since then, many countries uh, have adopted a national action plan uh, to implement 1325. Israel is not one of them, uh, but I will say a few words about what ha did happen in Israel. In 2005, Israel adopted legislation that was inspired by uh, UN uh, resolution uh, in the form of an amendment to uh, the Equality of Women's Rights Law. With this le legislation, Israel committed itself to ensuring proper representation of women on all national making committees, uh, including committees that deal with peace and security. And in addition, this legislation uh, uh, committed, uh, the, um, um, Israel is committed for the first time that the representation will be of diverse women from all parts of, of society, uh, and this became obligatory. Up until now, the implementation of this law is, uh, is very partial. Uh, over the years, women's organizations, Itach Ma'aki and other women's organizations in Israel have been pursuing the implementation of this law, uh, and there's no doubt that it's not enough. So since uh, during the years 2012 to uh, 2014, uh, a coalition of women's organizations 
Israeli women's organizations gathered for a process that uh, took place over almost uh, three years in which uh, they collaborated uh, to form an action plan that was, uh, uh, I have here a few copies of the action plan that I will also be able through Liel to send you uh, uh, the action plan. It, it's an action plan written by these 40 organizations and activists, uh, a civil society action plan to implement 1325 in Israel. Uh, it's, um, and it includes requirements for specific actions uh, of government bodies to advance participation in peace processes and uh, decision making, protection from violence, conflict prevention, and more. Uh, we submitted this uh, document to the government. It was at the end of 2013. And then we, uh, we uh, had a big uh, campaign and we had an involvement of uh, many members of parliament in Israel and also government officials who saw the potential of 1325. Uh, we even had a campaign with these safety pins <laughs> saying 1325. <laughs> and uh, this is part of the campaign. And at the end of the campaign, at the end of 2014, the, gov the Israeli government um, uh, adopted a resolution saying that it is committed to, uh, to uh, create um, an action plan for gender equality in the spirit of 1325 resolution principles. And in the explanatory appendix, it referred uh, both to the 1325 uh, resolution and to the civil society action plan uh, as a significant influence uh, on this decision. However, uh, it, this was December 2014. Uh, it was three months before the last elections, and up until now, two, almost two years later, uh, this uh, historic and profound uh, government decision has yet to be implemented. Um, so, I'll, I'll, before uh, going to the next phase, which is uh, our uh, current phase, uh, I would say that in the first phase we advanced 1325 through legal uh, uh, work, uh, stressing legal means and tools. And the second phase was the policy, uh, uh, advancing policy change. And now we are combining both these two levels, but we're focusing on the grassroots level. Uh, this is a part of a project that uh, Itach Ma'aki is leading together with Women Wage Peace Movement. I think that maybe there are uh, representatives from Women Wage Peace here, or maybe they will arrive. Uh, and with the Adam Institute uh, for Peace and uh, Democracy Education. Uh, because we believe that 1325 is a tool. It's a tool that gives, first of all, it gives sort of uh, legitimacy for women to get involved and to be and to influence the field of peace and security. And that is not an obvious uh, thing. Welcome, Ms. Hello. 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 1325 and its potential among diverse women's group, groups around Israel. Uh, so as part of this project, we are now recruiting uh, 500 women from diverse groups of society, diverse backgrounds and different uh, political views, and they overgo uh, seminars that provide them with an acquaintance uh, with the principles and potential of 1325 and allow them to dive uh, into the discourse of peace and security, which in Israel and not only in Israel uh, is, uh, I would say, um, has barriers uh, for women and, uh, and, and doesn't allow women to participate in uh, regularly. Um, the legal and the international perspectives uh, and the examples of women, uh, women's influence on peace process provides them, the women that participate in our seminars, with a notion of legitimacy uh, to speak and to demand to be part 
of the discourse and the decisions regarding peace and security. And they go through a training that gives them the opportunity to deal with gender perspectives on issues of peace and security, to discuss feminine narratives of the conflict, and to examine the peace resolutions uh, that are uh, on the table uh, with gender point of view. Uh, after, after the seminars, these 500 women in turn reach out to other women in their respective communities and deliver the messages and the tools they apprehend during the seminars. Um, they, they are these women, up until now we had three seminars, so up until now 154 uh, women participated in these seminars and nowadays they are initiating the activities in order to spread the word around. Uh, ha we are having lectures they initiating, uh, screening uh, relative, uh, rele relevant films, initiating discussions in their neighborhoods, towns, uh, universities, uh, classrooms, uh, and workplace participating in public decision uh, in, and participating in public uh, uh, conferences and discussions in this field. Uh, one of the outcomes of this uh, project uh, is something that I think Nivin also mentioned, is creating so sort of a movement of women speaking out, acting and supporting their peers on issues related to the conflict. Uh, the grassroots will the grassroots work will advance, uh, we believe that it will advance both structural shift uh, and also create a shift in beliefs and in, uh, in behavior among, uh, amongst uh, women themselves. Uh, Niveen mentioned uh, the criticism on the, on the, on the uh, resolution itself uh, and all through the years we are now uh, promoting 1325 for many for almost eight years now, all through the years we had, we we had, we we were dealing and we are still dealing with uh, lots of criticism and many dilemmas, like uh, what do women bring that is different to the negotiating uh, table, and many questions and, and 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 examples of women in Israel and all around the world who does not bring a different tune and does not sound different than uh, men. Uh, so all these, I think all the discussion and I think all the discussion that we're going to lead here, I don't think that it, uh, we can have a discussion that uh, lacks uh, criticism or the, the dilemmas that are always in the room. Uh, but I think this is part of the thing that we are dealing with, uh, with these new uh, rounds and circles of women. Um, and in order for these new voices and perspectives to be heard and to be influential, we need to build uh, the structure uh, for the changes needed in decision-making bodies uh, as well as in general public uh, discourse. Uh, this is not, as I said in the beginning, this is not an issue only for women as opposed uh, and it's not taking, taken for granted. So our goal nowadays is to increase the, dramatically the circles of women uh, in Israel society that participates in the peace and security discourse and to make their voices and potential uh, contribution penetrate and influence the decision-making bodies regarding peace. <laughs>